little espresso machine update. Um, everything's fitted, plumbed in and all that business uh, with regards to the machine just now. And the you can see the uh, water inlet pipe there, which runs under there. That's all plumbed in, all fine, all working okay. Um, but what I'm doing just now is I'm, as you can see, I've got the back panel, the side panel and the lid off. And I'm just trying a homemade insulator using a silicone baking mat, which is over here. And as you can see, it's silicone rubber and it's it's got little triangular bits on. And this is going to be the side that faces the boiler. So it's it basically creates lots of little pockets to capture the warm air and try and insulate it. And I had this idea from somebody on the Espresso group on Facebook, uh, whose name I forget off the top of my head, so apologies, but it's not my idea. As I say, there's a, a guy on there that, um, that picked up one of these and stuck one on his espresso machine. I thought, oh, you know what, it's got to be worth a try. See if, um, you know, we can keep the, the heat in a bit and minimise the reheating cycles and what have you. Uh, because I don't want to mess around with the sort of foil clad lagging because as you can see in there, there's lots of pipes to go around. So what I've done here is I've taken a piece of paper and just roughly cut out the shapes to go around the bits and pieces. And these slots, that one there is a slot that I cut that's not necessary because that goes over the sensor uh, for the water level. So that's why it says no slot there. So I've no not to transfer that to the rubber. And then that that and that all need a slot because these are the, the feed pipes that go to the um, the group head. And the rest of them will fit around the relevant bits without a slot. So, what I need to do now, now I've marked those, is cut them out of the rubber matting and uh, we'll go for a, a, a try and fit it. I'm certainly not going to win any awards for pretty installations, but as you can see, uh, this little piece of silicone here was, was wedged in here because this, when I originally stripped this, had sort of heat marks where obviously it had been exposed to the boiler. It wasn't in any danger of going through by the look of it, but it is contacting the boiler and I don't like that. So that's why I'd wedge that piece of silicone there as a little protective barrier. So now we've got that plus this matting. I did neglect to mark a cutout for this, which is just uh, like an inspection cap, which I also used to drain it um, using a syringe that uh, if you watch the videos, you may remember. I've reconnected the uh, the cap over here with its drain pipe and the fill level sensor wire. And a quick check around, just make sure that there is no, um, there's no sort of wires or anything trapped in between this mat and the boiler. And uh, I think, that's actually pretty good. As I say, it's not the neatest, but what I need to do now is um, warm it up and see how long it takes. Um, I Now, this, this is interesting because I did an initial test and I took some notes down, which I will be adding at the start of this video. Um, but obviously that was with everything on, with the side panels and top on and everything, so I don't know if that's going to make a difference. So what I'm going to do is uh, because I won't be uploading this straight away. I'm going to do a test just now with everything off to make sure that there's nothing obvious, obviously hideous going to occur. And um, and then I will do another test tomorrow once I've reassembled it all and it's and it's cold again. So let's uh, switch everything on. See if it needs any water. Oh. Right, oh, and actually, I'm, I need to. I'm, I need the phone to time this. I'm going to go ahead and switch that on and start the stopwatch on the tablet and. I will be back momentarily. Uh, first of all, we'll be looking to see when the anti-vac valve um, pops up and it starts building up pressure. 
and then obviously uh, see how long it takes to get up to full pressure. Just up past six minutes and you can see the anti-vac valve is starting to spit. That is six minutes and 27 seconds, give or take a second. Well, take a second. Um, so that's the boiler now. So I'm going to start building up pressure on this top gauge. And I've got to be honest, I'm not expecting a massive difference, if any. It typically takes about 10 minutes to heat up the boiler and get it up to pressure. Um, I mean, you can feel it's actually quite interesting. You can feel it's hot, but unless you press down and actually press the silicone against the boiler, you can put your hand on that. Whereas at this point, you wouldn't be able to. That's that's 100 degree. That's boiling, you know. Um, for anybody that's wondering about the material or concerned, this is a silicone baking mat, which is um, certified uh, safe for use in an oven up to 220 degrees C. So there's, you know, there's, there's no need for concern regarding the temperature it can handle because this boiler is going to reach a maximum of maybe, what, 150 under pressure, if that, probably less than that. Um, so I'm not remotely concerned about uh, its ability to handle the temperature. The, uh, the only concerns I have that, and the reason I'm trying it with the covers off just now is just to make sure I've not got anything trapped or stuck in the way. So you can see there, pressure's building up quite nicely and relatively quickly. And when it reaches the top of that green section, it should click off. And then the next step once I've seen how long that takes, is going to be timing how long between intervals of it switching off and back on and compare it to the original. So we're coming up now to max pressure. There we go, that's just clicked off. That's 8 minutes 40 seconds. Um, that's actually a little bit faster than usual, but to be fair... It could be a, uh, an ambient temperature thing in the room. It might be a little bit warmer in here than it was when I did the initial timings, which were about 10 minutes, just a little bit shy. So, you know, we'll see. Well, that's just clicked back on, which would probably be about a minute, uh, given the cycle times. Uh, I'm actually going to stop that and reset it so I can start it again as soon as this clicks off. He says, there we go. So that's just clicked off again now. Well, that surprised me somewhat. That's just taken two minutes and about 18 seconds before that clicked on again to build pressure back up. And before it was about a minute between them. Um, oh, wow, um, that seems unusually <laughs> better. I don't know if it's just, it's, it could be, I mean, this is not particularly super scientific, so I don't know if it's maybe me or my measuring methods, but... Um, if that's the case, then certainly I'm going to be pleased with this because it's a very simple um, upgrade, as it were, modification, whatever you want to call it. Um, right, so I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to put the panels back on now and pour myself a nice latte and then I will test it again tomorrow when the boiler's completely cold and see how it does then. This is the following day, just after lunchtime. Um, I've left it uh, long enough to make sure it was fully cool and um, switched it to position one 
top up the boiler which it did which it typically does after it's been warm it obviously loses a bit of moisture because of the heating evaporation what have you so when you switch it on the next day as a rule it will partially fill so um, much like it did in the test that you saw just previously obviously all the covers on it I ran it through a cycle of heating up and then switching on and off switching on and off to top up the pressure in the boiler you can see it's just cooling down now it's actually the gauge is just going down and I've got to say I'm really pleasantly surprised the fella who mentioned this in the espresso machine group I will find out his name and I'll, I'll put it uh, on the screen here um, because it's 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 worked really really well uh, i didn't expect much of a difference because he said he didn't get much of a difference on his but his was an upright boiler and it was wrapped around the side so i suspect he was actually losing more heat from the top <clears throat> than uh, he thought he would um, and obviously with this boiler being laid on its side and the mat laying across the top it's helping to retain a lot more of it and bear in mind it's not even covered on the sides I'm really, really impressed by the difference, and it kind of gives you an idea if you if you insulated it properly with the with the thick sort of um, foil type padding, how much better that could be. But I took screenshots of the split timer to show you the uh, the performance. I'm really, really surprised by it. If we take a look at the chart where I've labelled in red one to five. Number one here is where the anti-vac valve closed, which is where the water was boiling. Number two, two minutes, 11.69 seconds later, is where it reached max pressure and switched off. Number three is where it switched back on. So that's one minute, 27.2 seconds. And then it took 15.75 seconds to reheat back to full temperature, which is number four. And then on throughout the remainder of the chart. So you can see there right up to number 11 for a total running time of 23.03.06. Um, as you can see in the top, these are just individual screenshots because I couldn't fit all of the readings onto one screen. But you can see the timing differences before between uh, the the timing to heat back up, such as number six above the number five, 18 seconds. Um, and then it took two minutes, 52 to start to reheat again, then 18 seconds to reheat then three minutes, then 16 seconds, then three minutes um, and, and so on. And as you can see, it's actually taking longer between the reheat cycles because what's happening during this initial heating up phase is that the water is circulating and also heating the group head. So as it heats the group head, it retains heat better. But you can see that there are much longer gaps between the waiting to heat cycle and much shorter periods of time to heat it back up to full pressure. So all in all, I'm really, really pleased with this. So I hope this was useful for you. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.